Man, this feels weird. I can't believe I'm even on this. Man, it feels weird. Well, sorry to break the news to everybody, but I'm selling the XR, and from now on, I'm just gonna post reckless speeding videos. I'm kidding, of course, I'm not selling the XR. I, uh, a colleague of mine offered to sell me this at a discount because he was trying to get rid of it quickly. So I took him up on the offer because I think I can make a quick profit. But I thought it would be a shame not to ride it for a little bit and uh, make some videos on it. So, I mean, at least one video. Because I've been on a dual sport now for five years, I think. But prior to, prior to owning the XR, I had a ZX6R and I was in love with it. I thought fast motorcycles were fun. I thought they were sexy and I really missed it. And some of my early vlogs, I do talk about it. And so here we have an opportunity for me to ride a sport bike again and actually give some thoughts on what it's like. So I know a lot of you guys are into dual sports and stuff and you're not really sport bike people and that's fine. But at the end of the day, I think we're all motorcycle people and that's the important thing. And if you're never gonna ride a sport bike, that's cool. But I think it'd be fun to give you my perspective riding this after spending so much time upright on a cushy suspension on, a, on an XR um, and kind of give some insight into what it's what this experience is like because coming back to the just riding at home the other day was like it was very weird um, so once we get out here I'm gonna turn on to another road where I can kind of talk and then I'll kind of go over my thoughts on just we'll start with the riding position and then from there we'll go on to other things this is the first time I've had a chance to actually ride it because I just got it insured um, the DMV makes me register everything we we buy so when I transferred the title they said I had to register it so I was like all right might as well insure it even though by the time this video posts this bike will probably be for sale it's got 33,860 miles on it right now The riding position is uh, certainly cramped. Uh, that definitely was my first impression. Now, a lot of people probably don't know this, but when you're on a sport bike, you're not really supposed to lean on your wrist. The correct way to ride is to kind of pinch the tank with your legs and support yourself with your abs just enough to relieve pressure on your hands. Because you want to be able to almost just let go of the handlebars at any time. Because if you death grip them and you lean on them, it, it hurts how much control you have. It actually makes it more dangerous to take corners like that and you should really always be just barely gripping the hand grips and you should try to use your core to support yourself. That's the correct way to do it. I'm gonna take a right over here and there's some curvy, curvy road. It'll give me a chance to feel the handling just a little bit. I don't know, cornering is like scary for some reason. It doesn't feel like it wants to turn in quite the same as the XR, which is an odd thing to say. I think it has to do with the weight of the machine. I think this is heavier than my XR, though I haven't looked at the, haven't looked at the specs on the weight. It revs so fast. Like I'm trying to blip when I do downshifts, but I end up always just over revving it. And you need almost no no RPM to move either. Like the power is generated at the very bottom. I mean, this thing revs to 16,000 RPM according to the tachometer. Yeah, so it looks like to turn in, it really helps to kind of push on that side of the bar. If you guys have taken a motorcycle safety class, they may have told you that's how to uh, to initiate a turn. And I find that on the XR, maybe I just do it more intuitively, but on this, it's like it, it's almost required. Yeah. 
One of the best things about a sport bike is the riding position kind of makes you, it forces you to kind of become one with the shape of the motorcycle. And so it's like really satisfying experience once you kind of get used to it. And having that much horsepower on tap is like... Yeah, this thing has a lot of power. So it's like any, any RPM, it doesn't matter. If you give it power, it just blasts you into the stratosphere. So I don't even think I've talked about what this motorcycle is yet. <laughs> This is a 2001 Suzuki GSXR 750, and uh, it's fast. I think it came from the factory with like 145 horsepower. I believe it's an inline four, fuel injected, all the good stuff. I gotta say, one big noticeable, satisfying difference between this and the XR is like having the four cylinders is just. It's so smooth. It revs so smoothly. It's uh, it's really nice. God, I don't know. I kind of want to keep it. Yeah, there's a Tesla. I wonder if he'll race me. Well, <clears throat> the suspension is firm. It's almost like there is no suspension. Every little bump kind of hits me in the nuts and it's kind of a reminder of what how harsh this kind of stuff really is. I gotta say that XR is kind of luxurious. Besides the vibrations from that motorcycle, it's quite comfortable compared to something like this. But like I said, the point of something like this is to make you feel like you're a part of the motorcycle and you're a part of every movement and you can really feel everything which is uh, kind of nice it's kind of a cool change of pace God, it's so smooth though and for 33,000 miles that's a, a lot of miles actually for a motorcycle but in, in Phoenix a lot of bikes have high miles so if you don't live in Phoenix um, that is kind of a normal thing here Especially for something with this kind of displacement, because I'm sure the previous owners of this motorcycle took it on some trips. Yeah, buddy! God, it almost gets smoother when you rev it out. Like that's 6,000 RPM right there and I can barely feel the engine at all. God, the gears are so long. Like first gear you can hold until probably 60 at least. I'm gonna go straight here and then try to get some more talking in. Then we'll hit the, we'll hit the highway and I'll do some, some higher speed pulls. And then uh, we'll wrap it up probably before I get arrested. Well, I gotta say, and I thought of this earlier when I was looking at this motorcycle in my garage. It's like having an ex-girlfriend back. You know, there's a reason you broke up with her, but she's so hot. I don't really think there's room for this in my life right now. But it's really satisfying just to experience it again. You know, even even if just for like a, a month or so, it's just fun to come back to it. You know, and, and full fairings and stuff isn't for everybody, but when you have a full fared motorcycle like this, and you can kind of, you have cooler designs, you know, like the color scheme on this bike is gorgeous. Uh, the colors are, are beautiful. Um, and for as old as it is, and with as many miles as are on it, the paint is immaculate. Um, I'm going to try to find a spot to pull off and we can look at it. I really hope the wind noise is not too much. That's where I normally ride over there. But not today. <laughs> Picking this thing over there would probably hurt so bad. I don't know if my testicles could handle it. 
it's a dead end road here, so I should be able to get to the end of it, hop off, and kind of show you guys what this motorcycle looks like. Neutral. Neutral's real easy to get. Ugh. So yeah. 2001, baby. There's like not really any chips on it. There's some scuffs here and there, you know, but like in Illinois, when I used to get, you know, ride my bike out, there was a lot of bugs there and they'd actually chip the paint in the fairing and it doesn't look like it's got really any paint chipping from the from things like that. It was down on the left side here, which you can see. Um, but other than that, it's just so pretty. But that's kind of what I like about full fared motorcycles is you can have the designs and the aerodynamics and I think it looks pretty. Cause she's not good for me, I'll tell you that, she's not good for me. I would definitely get back into the habit of paying speeding tickets if I owned one of these. But god damn it feels so good. Like, the sensation of what seemingly infinite power anytime you want to give it is uh is really something that I think every motorcycle rider should experience at some point. The thing you have to realize is you have to be responsible with it. You know, if you're the kind of guy that goes around and rips it full throttle no matter what, no matter when, no matter where, uh, maybe, maybe don't buy one of these, but if you've got the self-control to keep it at low RPM and do the speed limit when you need to do the speed limit and then open it up in more reasonable times, this is something that I think every motorcyclist should really experience if you haven't had a chance to. And the thing is, you could buy this for the same amount of money that you could buy an XR for. For about 3000 bucks, you could have yourself an 01 GSXR 750. And I wouldn't be scared of the high miles, just to try to see if the guy's got maintenance records and try to make sure valve adjustments and things of that nature have been done, and you're probably golden. I mean, I don't really know how much can go wrong in one of these. I don't know if it's got a timing belt or a chain or any of that. If I didn't mind having the extra motorcycle on my insurance, I'd probably just keep this. But like I said, I don't have space for something like this in my life right now. I don't do, I don't do weekend rides. Really, I don't, I don't even really ride my motorcycle to work. So, if I had this, it's like, I don't really know what I would do with it. Just ride it once a month and speed. Also, something to note, the previous owner told me that the sprocket had been changed and so the speedometer is slightly off and it reads high. However, I'm not really sure if he had that correctly because the way I understand it is the speedometer is usually attached to the front wheel. Uh, so if this is driven off of a computer, then yeah, the speed won't be right. But if it's driven off the rotation of the front wheel, then I think it would still be right. But I haven't done enough research on this particular motorcycle to be able to tell you if that's the case. I really hope you guys can hear me because I feel like there's a lot of wind noise and a lot of engine noise. But I'm doing my best. Yeah, I think it is, uh, I think the speedometer is reading high. There's no way that guy just passed me at like 85 or 90. I don't think I'm doing 78. I think I'm doing 70.
Lord Jesus, this thing will be happy to bless you off of the planet. Whew. Yeah, man, if you don't hunker down under that windscreen, the wind will just peel you off the bike. Ready for this? Well, I gotta say, if you uh, wanna be the fastest thing on the road, this is all you need. And you can do it for three grand. <laughs> it's amazing in this country that like people don't need special training to ride things like this. I think in a lot of places around the world, you can't just buy a motorcycle with this much power. You have to be permitted to. You have to have some kind of permit or license to do it. But in this country, if you've got three grand, you can just buy a fast motorcycle. Well, I don't know if I got anything else to say about this bike. <clears throat> I think I've kind of said it all. I've enjoyed that ride. I mean, it's fun to accelerate hard. I kind of wish I knew how fast I was actually going, though. I mean, I thought the speedometer surely was connected to the front wheel, but I don't. I think it's connected to the computer and the RPM. So it'll rev higher at a lower speed, so the computer will think it's actually moving faster than it is. Because some of those numbers were not real. <laughs> yeah, man. Very satisfying, very fun. I mean, if I... Uh, Probably if I had a group to ride with, this might be a thing, but I just don't see it happening. I kind of feel like going back to my safe, slow, comfortable dual sport and just exploring some dirt roads. But this is still, man, this is like, this is just, it's like street candy. It's so smooth and fucking powerful. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, like I said in the previous video, I think I'm just going to kind of start doing more regular vlogs like this. Topic vlogs, if you will. And uh, this motorcycle just seemed like a perfect opportunity to come out and record some thoughts. But I really think this is something that most riders should experience at some point. Because it's, uh, it's really something. It really makes you feel like the most powerful thing on the road because you are the most powerful thing on the road. And you kind of constantly feel like you're you're holding back your unlimited amount of power that you can just unleash on anybody. And it's satisfying. It's actually fun to know that as you're riding down the road. Granted, this is only a 750, so the 1000 GSXR from 01 is probably more powerful and uh, you can probably get it for the same amount of money. Oh! Uh oh, those are my testes. All right, well, I hope everybody's having a good week. Have a good weekend.